the purpose of the program is to try and encourage high school students to take an interest in science and technology, learn about it, and seek careers in it so that they truly are the people who are going to be on the podium at the Life Sciences Award Dinner 15 years from now. My name is Lauren Wilson. I'm a grade 12 student at Glen Eagle Secondary School and I'm exploring the connection between apolipoprotein E isoforms and the connection in the thyroid pathway. The risk factor for Alzheimer's disease is not only age, but on a genotype perspective, it's the APOE4 allele. And what that does is it increases the risk of late onset Alzheimer's disease by approximately 15 fold. And we were seeing if this was the linkage between Alzheimer's disease and hypothyroidism. So I'm Faye Nero. I'm Sophia Shu. We're from Centennial Secondary School. We're doing skeletal muscle insulin signaling and maternal diets with vitamin B12 and folic acid imbalance. And we did a literature search and we found like a bunch of articles relating to it and we were interested in it. I'm Sam Begos and I'm from Kits. And I'm Thomas and I'm from Kits. And our project name is the uh, Biomediation Methylmercury via Methanogen Respiration. We found that there is methylmercury in the environment and we wanted to remove that by using bacteria that would convert that. The chemistry of how these bacteria actually metabolize these different chemicals and change them completely is really very interesting, like how you actually get environmental methylmercury, because it doesn't get there like that. It's made into that ion. And in fact, we can't actually synthesize this ion. It's extremely difficult to make get these bacteria do it. My name is Celine Jessa. I'm in grade 12 at Dr. Charles Best Secondary. I've been involved with a lot of development projects looking at uh, you know, health in, in developing countries. And I, I'm also really passionate about science, so I sort of figured this was a way to combine the two and look at HIV from a, a science, scientific perspective. My project is based on the idea that there are people who naturally control HIV by forcing HIV to mutate into a less virulent state. And so I tested one mutation that's been associated with attenuated function and basically tested whether its function was attenuated by the mutation. Hi, my name is Maggie Wang and I'm from Sir Winston Secondary School and my project's name is the SET7 mystery gene. So what I basically explored was the SET7 gene so far has been discovered to be responsible for inhibiting cell-to-cell -cell contract inhibition. So basically when SET7 is knocked down, the cells will just divide continuously and they won't stop. So I wanted to explore the effects of that gene. The SET7 knockout cells were incapable of forming tumors in vivo. So that's interesting because it indicates that inhibition of SET7 might activate a tumor suppressor gene or inactivate an oncogene. For the students, we want to give them an opportunity to experience what it's like to work in a real lab. And this is a way for them to determine what they're going to do after they graduate university. It's a really valuable experience to learn about discipline, about work ethic, how to work with others, and about all the new techniques that are happening in the lab. When I think back to what I was doing in high school, it was nothing like what these kids are doing now. And so they are pushing the boundaries of, of, of innovation. They're coming up with ideas that, that scientists have not even thought of at times, or bringing you know, a perspective of why something is important to, to a scientific lab um, that may not have, have, have thought or, or really seen that before. When we go into science, you know, we want to affect change, so to speak, and I think that's very important for the students to remember that all the time as they're advancing you know, their careers in science. My name is Sunny Lee. I go to Point Grey Mini School and my project is on the inflammatory to non-inflammatory switch of macrophages during skeletal muscle regeneration. We damaged the tibialis anterior muscle, which is the leg muscle of our animals, and we studied the, what happens after that, like the inflammatory response. What we're trying to prove is that there is a transition between the pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory macrophage populations. Hi, my name is Kayla. I'm a grade 12 high school student at York Coast School. My project's called Duck, Duck, Goose, an application of DNA sequencing. I own a lot of down products at home. I wanted to see like what was inside of my down feather product, so I didn't know there was duck or goose. I didn't know what percentage. So basically what I did was I sequenced the cytochrome C oxidase submutate 1 gene, which is one of the identifiers that will tell me what species it is. After all of this work, I found out that the suppliers were truthful. My name is Jessica, I'm a grade 11 student from York House School. And this year my science project is HER2 expression in endometrial cancer. There are many studies about HER2 in other cancers. My project is to find the effect of HER2 in endometrial cancer and possibly predict the survival rate after surgery. My name is Sean Love. And my name is Richard. 
and we're from Port Moody Secondary School. Our research project is on the effects of bone morphogenetic protein 8B on thermogenesis and weight loss. This protein is actually found in BAT, brown adipose tissue. So if we find that bnp is actually associated with brown adipose tissue, then that gives us a question, is it actually associated with thermogenesis? If it is, then it, can we help the weight loss programs? So my name is Megan Antel, and I'm from David Thompson Secondary School. My project is called Wild Diesel Destroyers, and I'm investigating the biodegradation of diesel by yeast isolated from the Black Sage Bench in the Okanagan of British Columbia. I did a fermentation project at Science World, and we were able to isolate 14 strains of yeast from our fermentation. At the same time, I'd been reading about bioremediation, and I learned that some bacteria and some yeast can biodegrade diesels. So having all these yeasts in our freezer, I was curious to see if the yeast from the Okanagan could do the same thing.